Hi guys and welcome to my review of One Piece chapter 953. It's been a while since I talked about One Piece and I don't remember how far I got into Wano before I just dropped off the face of the earth so anyway we're just gonna jump straight into this. Right in the notes for this review uh, I actually didn't write a lot of things down I really felt like the chapter was short uh, but I think it was just because we got so much about Kawamatsu and like uh, the, the few things that we got that were really progressing the story were kind of like not small things, but like, you know, there isn't that much to talk about. Uh, but getting into the chapter, uh, we get a lot, um, or the chapter is mainly focused on Kawamatsu. It's Kawamatsu's life after Hiyori left um, 13 years ago because obviously she felt like she was taking, well, not taking advantage of him, but like they had very little to eat and she could feel that he was growing weaker because he was giving her as much food as she, as she needed. and. She didn't want to be that burden, so, yeah. But then we also learned that after uh, she left, he was fully committed to end his own life because he felt like he had failed her. Um, and that's where the story leads us to where he ended up in Ringo and ending up at the uh, the, the graveyard where you have all these war warriors resting and they're buried with their swords. And he makes it his mission to gather all these swords so that when eventually they can all face off against Kaido, they have weapons to arm their warriors because obviously uh, it's been an issue up until now that they have people who are willing to join their cause but they don't actually have weapons to fight with because everyone who is uh, not in total support of Kaido don't actually uh, have weapons or a lot of them don't at the very least because you know it's not legal um, but that it solves that problem that we by the end of the chapter have thousands of swords and I really love the little detail that uh, in the short amount of time that Kawamatsu um, by himself with Onimaru's help uh, he gathered a few hundred swords and then in the 13 years that he was gone Onimaru then by himself gathered like basically the rest of them uh, which then amounts to a thousand swords like Kawamatsu says in the end like if we could have a thousand warriors we would have plenty of swords for all of them like it, it, it's that hard work and it's really great coming from Onimaru who tried to like, who, who was really against in the beginning the idea of taking these swords because they were important and they it, it yeah because Kamatsu obviously was acting like the grave robbers who came just for the swords and were disrespecting the dead and all that um so I, re I really really liked that even though in the beginning he was the one protecting the grave and the swords and everything he then ended up gathering all of them um and I really liked the little note at the end that um Kawamatsu had about well, it can't have been Onimaru who did this, because this would have to be the work of a human, but as we know now, <laughs> Onimaru and, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Gya Gyakimaru, <laughs> I was like, yeah, something. Gyakimaru um, is the same person, um, and Onimaru has the ability to transform into him. I don't know if that's like a power he's always had, if it's a Delphi power, uh whatever it is uh his fox form seems to be his default so uh don't know how this power came about i'm sure we'll learn um because i don't think we have that much information about gyakimaru like we we have like little bits here and there because he's fought with sorrow and like obviously he's after uh shusui uh and all those things but we don't really have you know the whole background story other than he was the fox of the uh, daimyo who lived, who was like the over, the person over the land of uh, Ringo and all that. So I'm sure there's a story there and an explanation for his power. <laughs> like I was really like, I looked up at Wikipedia like, have, have I missed something about like his power and anything? But no, 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 it's, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get an explanation at some point. Um, my favorite thing by the end is by the end where we have, um, uh, Hiyori offered Soro Enma the sword that was gifted to or used to belong to uh, Oden and is the only sword that has ever wounded Kaido which is incredible because when I first read this I was like yeah okay sure 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 and then I read it again and I was like wait hold on a second hold on a second this is a pretty big deal because nothing wounds Kaido ever like that was intro that, that was our introduction to him was that like no matter like how many times they try to kill him it just it didn't do anything like guillotines would break swords would like break like you can't hurt this guy so the fact that Sora's now getting a sword that it's not rumored to have hurt him but has hurt uh, 
Hokkaido. That's pretty big because Sora isn't the main character. Um, but it would be really great to have a team up of him and Luffy and possibly other people going up against Kaido. Even though I have said that I would love for Luffy to take on Kaido himself. Um, but yeah, I, I love that part because the thing is, the whole uh, Shisui thingy magic. Um, I am personally on Sora's side because he earned the freaking right to that sword. But I do understand the, the, like, the viewpoint that everyone else has. Because like, who's going to believe that like... Uh, Yuma was revived into a zombie because he got Brook's shadow put into him and then he fought Zoro and lost and gave him the sword. Uh, unlikely, right? So I get it, but I think I, I really I, I want Zoro to have Shusui, but because that has a story like there's a difference between him earning the sword than him getting the sword from Hiori. I feel like because he it's not that. You know, because he earned it. He really earned it. Like, that's, like, the one sword that he fought for so hard against this legendary samurai swordsman person. And I just... I really want him to keep it. <laughs> um, but I I don't know. Um, I don't know if in the end he'll still have it. Because, like, for all we know, another one of his swords could break. And then he's going to have Shusui, Enma, and... The white one that I forget what it's called. Because um, then all three of them kind of have a story. But I, I mean, it's like, you know, his original white sword, Shusui, they have like the stories behind them. And then you, I guess, I guess Enma has a story, but it's not Sora's story, you know? You know? So maybe, maybe depending on ha what happens, I just. Shusui. <laughs> um. Did I forget anything? Let me see. Um, mm, I don't think so. I think those are the biggest like plot points of this because it was very background focused, and I didn't. I don't need to recap all of that. Um, on a side note, though, I don't remember. I don't think I said this. I love uh, Kawamatsu's character design. I think of every new character we've had in this arc, his is my favorite character design. There's just something about him that's so like comforting because this is a pretty heavy arc and it has some pretty heavy themes and it's filled with these like tough people <laughs> and Kawamatsu is just like huggable I, I don't know how to describe it I just really love his very comforting character design um yeah uh th that's just like a little side note I just really enjoy like every panel he's in I treasure those because I really love him um yeah, uh, I am obviously missing a bit of other straw hats, but, you know, spending time with Sora is good too. I just wish we could see him interact with at least one more straw hat person other than, you know, these side characters. Um, don't know why I did this. They are side characters. Um, yeah. Um, regardless, we're, we're, I feel like we should be ending the preparation phase. I really want to get into, like, you know, the main conflict. Um yeah um but let's see like we still have the thing with kaido and big mom to see how that's resolved because obviously like kaido isn't gonna go down by her hand in this art there's no way but i also don't think he's gonna like take down big mom it doesn't seem like they're fighting that seriously because i think if they did the whole island that they're on would have been destroyed long ago uh so i'm really interested in seeing how that's gonna be resolved and um yeah but i think I, I just really want to move this along because I feel like we've been prepping for the fight for a long time. I just want to get into it, you know? I miss some good action. I yeah, Just move it along a little bit. But these chapters are really short, I feel like. Um, and I just, I really, look, here's the thing. Here's the thing about Wano. I want all the straw hats to get together. We've had like eight out of nine. We're not counting Jinbei right now. Eight out of nine have been in the same place if I remember correctly. So close. <laughs> I just want everyone <laughs> to be in the same place for once. It's literally the last time everyone was gathered in one place was the beginning of Dressrosa. That's so long ago. It was like in 2012. I miss having all the straw hats together. <sighs> it's been a long time. <laughs> anyway, I'm just this is a short chapter, it's gonna be a short review. I'm just gonna end it here. Um, 
while I'm still getting back into doing reviews and stuff. So ah, bear with me for a bit, but you can like this video if you have if you liked anything that I have to say. Leave in the comments below what you thought of this chapter and other things. I mean, you can let me know all your thoughts about Wano so far because it's been a while since I've posted anything in One Piece or just posted anything in general. And you can subscribe to hopefully see more content in the future. And until next time, bye.